the media's coverage of issues of evolution and intelligent design is unfortunately fixated on two equally dogmatic points of view. Creationism, which maintains that the earth was created according to the strict accounts of the book of Genesis, and scientific Darwinism, which points to the extensive fossil record showing the evolution of species, and therefore concludes that higher life forms have emerged only as a result of a long, blind, bumbling, and brutal process of evolution by survival of the fittest. In life we find that creativity and destruction are two opposing tendencies. We should not make the mistake of thinking the forces of destruction in ecosystems, which appear to be mere cleanup operations, are responsible for the creativity of evolution. The divergent life forms found throughout the tree of life do not appear to be the result of random mutations selected for particular niches. There is a recurrent tendency to form arrays. These may appear as simple first order arrays or second order arrays, which are arrays of arrays or third order arrays, which are arrays or of arrays of arrays, or even higher levels of organization. We see is a basic fern-like pattern expressing itself throughout different branches of the tree of life. For example, we see this basic array making pattern in the feathers of birds, as well as similar feathering patterns in sea organisms and the antenna of moths. This underlying pattern of life, the formation of arrays, and arrays of arrays, and arrays of arrays of arrays, occurs throughout all kingdoms and phyla of life. Therefore, when we see arrays in biology, we should not assume that they occur as a result of natural selection to a particular niche. Surprisingly, this underlying tendency of evolution to express itself as a race accounts for a very large percentage of the morphology of biolog biological systems. We find that many of life's critical adaptations occur in, in the form of arrays. So we can even say that array formation is the mechanism by which life adapts to new niches. Evolution seems to accelerate when certain nodes in an array mutate and take on new forms and functions. Evolutionary biologists believe that the fundamental array structure of segmented worms evolved into the fundamental array of the backbones of vertebrates. We can see that the appendages of higher organisms tend to form in arrays. For example, the bony structures underlying hands and paws tend to be in the form of arrays of arrays. Ultimately, we can say that the fundamental structures of skeletons, which is conserved throughout higher life forms, tends to be expressions of arrays and arrays of bony structures. We can see that even among higher organisms, which have appendages, which are really expressions of arrays of arrays, they continue with life's tendency to express even more arrays at another level. Higher organisms continue with nature's innate tendency to express arrays by expressing patterns of arrays of stripes and arrays of spots.
tessellation or repetition of form is often seen in works of art and is considered one of the symmetry transforms which is an inherent part of the aesthetics of beauty. We see that life's natural tendency to express itself in arrays is not the result of adaptation to a particular niche because array making occurs throughout all branches of the tree of life and constitute a substantial portion of the morphology of life forms. Ray making is an innate tendency of life to express beauty through its evolution.